The most massive galaxies in our neighborhood formed their stars billions of years ago, early in the history of the universe. At the present day, they produce very few new stars. Astronomers have long believed that this is because they contain very little gas, a key ingredient necessary to produce stars. But a new study published in Nature Astronomy is now challenging this long-held view. In addition, a new discovery about distant galaxies is not what we imagined about these distant stars. So, let's talk about it. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about why stars in distant galaxies are heavier than we thought. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. Stars are the most widely recognized astronomical objects and represent the most fundamental building blocks of galaxies. The age, distribution, and composition of the stars in a galaxy trace the history, dynamics, and evolution of that galaxy. Moreover, stars are responsible for the manufacture and distribution of heavy elements such as carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, and their characteristics are intimately tied to the characteristics of the planetary systems that may coalesce around them. Consequently, the study of the birth, life, and death of stars is central to the field of astronomy. If we start from the beginning and talk about their formation, Stars are born within the clouds of dust and scattered throughout most galaxies. A familiar example of such a dust cloud is the Orion Nebula. Turbulence deep within these clouds gives rise to knots with sufficient mass that the gas and dust can begin to collapse under its own gravitational attraction. As the cloud collapses, the material at the center begins to heat up. Known as a protostar, it is this hot core at the heart of the collapsing cloud that will one day become a star. In some cases, the cloud may not collapse at a steady pace. In January 2004, an amateur astronomer, James McNeil, discovered a small nebula that appeared unexpectedly near the nebula Massier 78 in the constellation of Orion. When observers around the world pointed their instruments at McNeil's nebula, they found something interesting. Its brightness appears to vary. Observations with NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory provided a likely explanation. The interaction between the young star's magnetic field and the surrounding gas causes episodic increases in brightness. In addition, stars are fueled by the nuclear fusion of hydrogen to form helium deep in their interiors. The outflow of energy from the central regions of the star provides the pressure necessary to keep the star from collapsing under its own weight and the energy by which it shines. But do stars differ from each other? As shown in the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, main sequence stars span a wide range of luminosities and colors and can be classified according to those characteristics. The smallest stars, known as red dwarfs, may contain as little as 10% the mass of the sun and emit only 0.01% as much energy, glowing feebly at temperatures between 3,000 to 4,000 K. Despite their diminutive nature, red dwarfs are by far the most numerous stars in the universe and have lifespans of tens of billions of years. On the other hand, the most massive stars, known as hypergiants, may be 100 or more times massive than the Sun and have surface temperatures of more than 30,000 K. Hypergiants emit hundreds of thousands of times more energy than the Sun but have lifetimes of only a few million years. Although extreme stars such as these are believed to have been common in the early universe, today they are extremely rare. The entire Milky Way galaxy contains only a handful of hypergiants. In general, the larger a star, the shorter its life, although all but the most massive stars live for billions of years. Therefore, when a star has fused all the hydrogen in its core, nuclear reactions cease. Deprived of the energy production needed to support it, the core begins to collapse into itself and becomes much hotter. However, as hydrogen is still available outside the core, so hydrogen fusion continues in a shell surrounding the core. The increasingly hot core also pushes the outer layers of the star outward, causing them to expand and cool, transforming the star into a red giant. So, if the star is sufficiently massive, 
the collapsing core may become hot enough to support more exotic nuclear reactions that consume helium and produce a variety of heavier elements up to iron. However, such reactions only offer a temporary reprieve. Gradually, the star's internal nuclear fires become increasingly unstable, sometimes burning furiously, other times dying down. These variations cause the star to pulsate and throw off its outer layers, enshrouding itself in a cocoon of gas and dust. What happens next depends on the size of the core. Now that we know the basic knowledge about stars, let's discuss what scientists have found out about the stars in distant galaxies and what makes them so different. For as long as humans have studied the heavens, how stars look in distant galaxies has been a mystery. In a study published in the Astrophysical Journal, a team of researchers at the University of Copenhagen's Niels Bohr Institute is doing away with previous understandings of stars beyond our own galaxy. Since 1955, it has been assumed that the composition of stars in the universe's other galaxies is similar to that of the hundreds of billions of stars within our own, a mixture of massive, medium-mass and low-mass stars. But with the help of observations from 140,000 galaxies across the universe and a wide range of advanced models, the team has tested whether the same distribution of stars apparent in the Milky Way applies elsewhere. The answer is no. Stars in distant galaxies are typically more massive than those in our local neighborhood. The finding has a major impact on what we think we know about the universe. The mass of stars tells us astronomers a lot. If you change mass, you also change the number of supernovae and black holes that arise out of massive stars. As such, our result means that we'll have to revise many of the things we once presumed, because distant galaxies look quite different from our own, says Albert Sneppen, a graduate student at the Niels Bohr Institute and first author of the study. In addition, researchers assumed that the size and weight of stars in other galaxies was similar to our own for more than 50 years for the simple reason that they were unable to observe them through a telescope as they could with the stars of our own galaxy. Furthermore, distant galaxies are billions of light years away. As a result, only light from their most powerful stars ever reaches Earth. This has been a headache for researchers around the world for years as they could never accurately clarify how stars in other galaxies were distributed, an uncertainty that forced them to believe that they were distributed much like the stars in our Milky Way. We've only been able to see the tip of the iceberg and known for a long time that expecting other galaxies to look like our own was not a particularly good assumption to make. However, no one has ever been able to prove that other galaxies form different populations of stars. This study has allowed us to do just that, which may open the door for a deeper understanding of galaxy formation and evolution, says Associate Professor Charles Steinhardt, a co-author of the study. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.